Good afternoon, everyone, uh, wherever you're coming, joining from. Um, thank you for taking the time to join this session on study abroad at Royal Rose University. My name is Harry Nakayama. I'm Education Abroad Coordinator at the Office of International Collaboration and Development. It is my pleasure to talk about uh, this study abroad opportunity. And I think this topic is very, very a uh, good um, subject to talk about, especially in this current situation where people can travel, but I know that many people are itching to travel. So if you can travel, at least we can talk about it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so before I start my presentation, I wanted to share my favorite quote by Mark Twain. He said, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. So this quote really resonated with me because this is exactly how I felt when I decided to study abroad from Japan to US and eventually to Canada. So at that time, study abroad option was not that popular because of the concern with the job prospect. After I go back to Japan, maybe I won't be able to find an employment or and the cost, the concern with the cost. But I wanted to study abroad. I wanted to explore the world. And one thing that I knew was that I didn't want to regret when I get older. So maybe when I get older, I'll be sitting outside on a porch, on a rocking chair. And I didn't want to think that, oh, what if I studied abroad at that time? What kind of life would I have had? I didn't want to have that regret when I get older. I didn't want to have that what if question. So I followed my heart, I followed my dream, and then I went uh, outside of Japan and studied abroad in US and Canada, and I have no regrets. Because now I'm living in Canada, working in Canada, I'm living a life that I would have never ever imagined when I was thinking about this opportunity. So if this is something that you're passionate about, if this is something that you want to do, I highly, highly recommend you following this path of study abroad because this could be your last opportunity if you come, if you think about it, because if you get a job, full-time job, or if you start a family, maybe it's difficult to take this big chunk of time to study abroad for like three or four months. So um, this could be a, what your last opportunity to do that. And also you never know what you're gonna discover at the end of this journey. So if this is something that you want to do, I will support you 100%. Okay, so this is the overview of my presentation today. So my presentation is going to be about 20 minutes and then for the rest of the time, I will answer your questions. So first I'm going to cover why study abroad and how to study abroad, where to study abroad, how and how to apply. I'm gonna finish with the information about the cost. Okay, so why study abroad? There are so many benefits when it comes to study abroad, but the first thing that I want to mention is that this experience will broaden your perspectives and be more innovative. So if you study abroad, um, go to a different country, you'll be exposed to different culture, different custom, different a social system, different belief system, that will naturally broaden your horizon. And that experience might change how you see the world. That might change your value system or that might transform some of the beliefs that you had before. And I, and I believe that ha the, having that diverse and global perspective is very, very important and critical to succeed in this global society. And also through this experience, you will discover something new and different. Food is a good example. If you go to a different country, you will try food that you wouldn't have tried in Canada and you might really like it. And another good example is friends, friendship that you will build. So if you go to a different country and you will make new friends that you wouldn't have made maybe if you stayed in Canada. So those are the, some of the examples. And another thing that I want to mention is that uh, this was the case for me, but if you study abroad, I think you will spend some time to reflect on who you are and what you want to do. 
okay? And then through that experience, um, you might discover something new about yourself that you didn't know about before. You might find your new passion. You might discover um, your new dream through this experience. So that's the potential of this study abroad experience. And also I want to mention that this experience will boost your employability. So nowadays employers are looking for people who have very good soft skills, not so much hard skills because hard skills can be replaced by the artificial intelligence or automation. And when it comes to soft skills, I believe that study abroad experience is one of the best ways to enhance those skills. So let's take the communication skills as an example. If you go to a different country, maybe you might not be able to use English. So you have to rely on your body language. And when it comes to communication, um, nonverbal communication is way more important than verbal communication. So if you go to go study abroad a different country, you'll be able to strengthen that part of the communication skills. And another skill or competence that, um, that you will be able to improve on will be flexibility. And flexibility, I believe, is very, very important in coming years because we currently live in very rapidly changing society and you need to be flexible to different changes. And of course, if you go to a different country, you have to be flexible. That's the first thing that you have to do. You have to adapt yourself to new environment. You have to adapt yourself to new culture. And then, and you will be able to, a, um, you will be able to gain that experience by studying abroad. You will be able to enhance that flexibility competence that will be required, I think, um, to be, you know, to navigate yourself in this a, um, constantly changing society. And other skills that you can gain will be critical thinking skills. Of course, you'll be, uh, you will go to a different country and you'll be critical about how you think and uh, who you are and about your country. And also leadership skills is another thing that you have to take initiatives to, uh, to make this study abroad experience, experience possible. And also the problem solving skills that you'll be faced with so many problems. I can assure you, <laughs> you will have many problems that you have to overcome, but that will make you stronger. Uh, that will give you more experience to, to be better uh, once you start working in the, in, in the society. And also I want to share one thing that, um, so a few years ago, the government of Canada, they shared a um, um, study that was conducted by a different organization and is, that study said that only 11% of Canadian students study abroad, okay? So let's say that you apply for a job and the 10 people are shortlisted, shortlisted for the position and only 1% over the 10 people has this experience of study abroad. And if you are the one, if you, and then you studied abroad, you will stand out from the rest of the crowd because you have that unique experience where you can highlight, you can market the experience, the skills that you gained through this uh, study abroad experience. So, and it, to me, if I'm the employer, if you, if the, you say that you studied abroad, um, you went to a different country, that, that, will, that will tell me that, okay, you are more independent, you adventure, you are more, very determined, you can take actions and you are more culturally competent. And then you have more diverse perspectives, which make you, which make you more creative and innovative. And all, and all those are very positive attributes that, uh, that can convey to a future employer. So I highly encourage you to take this opportunity to really uh, strengthen those um, transferable skills that will be required in the future. And also, I want to mention that uh, you will be able to earn RU Royal Rose credits without interrupting your studies. So this uh, speaks to the fact that uh, one of the biggest concerns that the Canadian students have when it comes to study abroad is that, oh, this experience might delay my graduation, okay? But this is not the case. As long as you follow the steps, as long as you have all the courses approved by program head, you don't have to delay your studies, okay? So this is something that um, you don't have too much worry about and I will assist you 
to make sure that you follow the process so uh, you will be able to graduate with your cohort members. And lastly, I want to mention the funding, okay? Because this is the biggest barrier to study abroad. And the many people are discouraged by this because it costs money. So that's why I can't study abroad, but there are many uh, opportunities available. So I'm gonna speak to that uh, near the end of my presentation. So how to study abroad? And there are various ways to, um, to participate in this opportunity, but there are major three major ways. The first one is the student exchange. This is the most popular way to uh, participate in this opportunity. So you will, you will take one term or semester abroad. So we have a, a number of uh, partners that we work with and then you take one semester at our partner institution and you will be able to uh, earn credits towards your degree. Like I said, you need to go through the process of the approval by your program head, but as long as you do that, you'll be able to, um, to be able to transfer the courses that you took at the partner institutions to your program. So that won't delay your study. Uh, the second option is the short term program. Okay, so this is the two to six weeks in during the summer or winter. And I think this is perfect for people who can't just take uh, three or four months off in the study in a different country. But maybe you can uh, take some time off during the summer or a few weeks and then you can get that uh, international experience by doing that. And it's possible to transfer credit upon pre-approval by your program head. And the third option, and this one is getting more popular because of COVID, but uh, so this is going to be virtual global learning opportunity. So this means that you'll be taking a short or long-term online courses from our partners, okay? So the, during this time, the, our partners offer some online courses and then you can take those courses online. And the, some of the benefits is that uh, first, it's accessible because unlike the traditional exchange or unlike the traditional study abroad opportunities, you don't have to travel. You just get to stay in, at home and you can take so those online courses uh, from the comfort of your home. And so that's why you don't have to pay so much. And also you still, you'll be able to gain that international experience because you'll be studying with this, the people from different country. And one thing, uh, one of the reasons why some people study abroad is, that, is to build their network internationally, okay? So if you participate in this global learning opportunity, you'll be able to build that network with people from different countries. And eventually, uh, future in the future, if you want to connect with them, you might be able to do that. And also you'll be exposed to different a uh, learning and teaching style and the teaching approach because how, for example, the teachers, the professors teach in, for example, Japan will be different from how we teach in Canada. So you will get exposure to that different way of learning. So that's the benefits of the virtual global learning opportunity. And again, like the short-term program, it's possible to transfer credit upon pre-approval. So where in the world can I go? So there are so many options that you can choose from. So currently we have um, 23 active partners uh, from 15 different countries. And this number is um, continuing to grow. But during this presentation, because I don't have so much time, I'm not gonna cover all the, the partners, but I'm going to just introduce just a few partners that we work with. So the first country is the Japan. So we have partnership with Kanagawa University and then Seinan Gakuin University. And Kanagawa University is great because it's centrally located. It's very close to Tokyo. So it's very convenient to go back and forth between Tokyo and uh, Kanagawa. And Seinan Gakuin University is located in Southern part of Japan. And then it offers some English courses available for you to take. Moving on to different country, Germany, we have two 
uh, partners that we work with, uh, specifically Berlin School of Economics and Law and Munich University of Applied, Applied Sciences. And then we are con uh, developing more partnerships with um, other institutions in Germany. And the Germany is great because they offer so many English courses so that you have more options uh, to choose from. And next one is just one second, Mexico. So we have partnership with ITESO University. This is a very prestigious, renowned university in this in Mexico. And we have a strong partnership with the School of Tourism and, and Hospitality. And they have they do uh, they do have a project during the year three. If you are a student, if you are enrolled in the um, global tourism management they have a project that uh, the you will railroad student will be working with the students from ITESO on the project so it's sort of the um online collaborative international uh project experience that you can get um and that you can also start, uh, do the student exchange with this university and south korea we have a number of uh, universities that you can choose from, and um, the Sukhumyung Women's University, University of Seoul, and uh, Kyonghe University is very highly rated, uh, ranked university in South Korea, one of the best universities that you can go in South Korea. So uh, you will get the very good quality education from any of these uh, um, universities. In Spain, uh, UPF, and this is a big university. It's located in a very ideal location, which is, is in Barcelona. So if you want to go travel to Barcelona or Spain, this is the perfect location to go. In Chile, we have a partnership with Duoc UC. Duoc UC is, is great because it could be tricky to find a um, universities that offer English courses in Chile, but UPUC offers several courses in English. So even you don't speak Spanish, you can still go there and do the student exchange. And Austria, we have uh, two partners that we work with, MCI um, and Salzburg University of Applying, Applied Sciences. And we very uh, close, closely work with these universities. And we do a number of exchange and also short-term program with uh, especially MCI. And many of our uh, railroad students like to go to one of these universities in Austria during the winter time because you can see on the picture uh, that it's a perfect location to ski. So if you are if you like to ski, this is perfect place to go, and so you can ski and study at the same time. And Vietnam, we have a partnership with National Economics University. So Vietnam is, of course, is one of the fastest growing uh, emerging countries in the world. So if you want to see that rapid uh, development or excitement uh, building up the country or the society, this is a very exciting place to go. And next one is Australia. So, you know, this is the English speaking English speaking country, but you they offer different culture and of course different natural environment. And then Western Sydney University is a great place to go because it's very diverse. Many people from different countries go to this specific university. So you'll be able to make friends from all over the world. And Italy, of course, this is the one of the most popular a tourist destination in the world. And the Ilum University is located in is located in Milan. So you you know you can enjoy um, spending some time there. And of course, you can go to Rome or Florence or wherever you would like to go, and you can enjoy delicious food and culture that Ita Italy has to offer. So eligibility. So first, you need to uh, complete one full term at Royal Rose University. That's the first um, thing that you have the, the requirement. And then also you need to have a minimum GPA of, of B, and you need to be willing to be a great RU ambassador abroad. And also you have to meet the academic requirement at the partner institution. So eligibility is quite simple. So how to apply? So uh, if you are interested in this opportunity, you can visit our website and then you will find that online application form on the Education Abroad website. 
And then second thing that you have to do is to submit your motivation letter. And then you can send that to go global at railroad.ca. And important dates to remember. So application deadlines, uh, September 30th, if you want to study abroad during the winter term and April 1st, if you want to study during the fall term. So what's the next step? So you, uh, filled out the application form, you send the motivation letter. What's going to happen next is that, so we will take a look at your application. And if the application is accepted, uh, we will nominate you to the, to the partner institution. And after that, the partner institution, partner institution will send you an email with instructions on how to apply to that university. So the first thing is that you apply to partner institution, and submit required documents. And second, this is very important, meet with program head and then and OICD, which is going to be me, to discuss your study plan and course selections. So this is the step that um, we will take a look at the courses that you will be taking at the partner institutions, if they are well aligned with our programs so that we will, um, so that we can transfer those courses that you took at the partner institutions to your program. So this is a very important step. And thirdly, uh, if you're accepted by host institution, we will do a pre-departure information for you. So the cost. So this is the last slide. And I wanted to um, share some information about the cost because like I said in the beginning, the biggest barrier to study abroad is really the financial aspect of it. So um, first, the tuition. Okay, the tuition, no additional tuition fees. So what's gonna happen is that when you study abroad, you will continue to pay to Royal Rose University. You will continue to pay to your program, but you don't have to pay anything additional to participate in this opportunity, okay? So just like some ancillary fees may apply, but um, basically you will just continue to pay to Royal Rose University and no extra um, cost involved with that. And the living cost, of course, you have to pay for flight, accommodation, local transportation, food, and etc. and health insurance. Sufficient health insurance coverage is required. And uh, for this, if you are a um, undergraduate on campus, a on campus and full-time student, you don't have to purchase anything uh, additional health care because you are, are you insurance will cover you while you uh, you're while you're studying abroad but if you're not uh, full-time undergraduate a um, uh, undergraduate student uh, you will have to purchase additional health insurance when you study abroad and visa application fees only if required uh, please start early on your research and the scholarship and award awards so this is the, the, the part that I wanted to um, talk more about. So various scholarships may be available. So there are many opportunities, the scholarships opportunities um, you can find online, okay? So what I recommend you to do is to do some research and some of the good ones are scholarshipcanada.com and that, that's a good one. And there are other, the good um, scholarship, scholarship opportunities, such as like you see on the screen, Irving K. Barber. So this is a very good one. They offer two different types of scholarships. And one is very fairly easy to get. Um, and then the scholarship amount will range from $1,000 to $3,500. And that might cover your uh, flight tickets. And uh, the second, um, the, the scholarship opportunity from the Irving Irving K. Barber is uh, more competitive, um, but uh, you might be able to get that as well. And also the Canadian government offers scholarships of, uh, for Canadian students as well. And um, especially there's one scholarship that is applicable to students who want to study in South Korea. So if you are interested in going to South Korea to study abroad, we, uh, the, the government of Canada offers that opportunity. And then also there's so many uh, foreign governments uh, support Canadian students to study abroad. 
So for example, like Germany, I mentioned, um, there's a scholarship uh, program uh, for Canadian students and like the, for all the, the international students. And Austria, they have a great scholarship opportunity as well and Japan as well and there's some other countries. So do your, you know, the, do your research and they, I'm sure that you will find a lot of um, opportunities available. So don't let the cost scare you from taking this uh, exciting opportunity. All right, so some of the pictures, I'm going to skip those because we have only five minutes left. So this is my contact information, uh, go global at royrose.ca. This is the best way uh, to reach me. So if you have any questions uh, or concerns, please let me know and um, I'll be more than happy to assist you. So we have, uh, yeah, it went five minutes. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Let's see the chat. Hey, that was great, uh, Harry. Um... I tell you, the last presentation made me hungry, and this presentation makes me want to travel. So, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, well, there's no there's no questions in the okay. chat, but I, I do have a question. Um, oh. Which RU programs do you feel are best suited for this uh, for the study abroad? Um, so I can speak to the the very popular programs that students do the exchange uh, program. So the, the the Bachelor of Arts in Global Tourism Management. And Bachelor of Arts in, in, in International Hotel Management are a very popular uh, program that students do the exchange. And also we have the BBA uh, students uh, studying abroad as well. And we do the, the reciprocal, reciprocal exchange so that uh, we will receive some students from the partner institutions to come and join our programs. And we, that will make the, the classroom more international, more diverse. That sounds amazing. Very interesting. Yeah. Anybody yeah. else that has any questions? You guys are all okay. <laughs> well, I guess you you covered it and answered okay. everyone's questions, Harry. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll have one uh, one last prize to give away today. Uh, so I'm going to ask a question and. Um, first person to, to get their uh, the right answer in the chat box uh, gets the prize. So uh, Harry talked, uh, gave, gave us some amazing slides today and talked about uh, some of the um, countries that we have partnerships with. Uh, so can you please, a um, what I want to know is mention a country that is in Europe that we have a partnership with. Austria, way to go, Raphael. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Raphael was first. Thank you. And Raphael, I will uh, stay on the, the, the call and I'll get your, your contact information from you. Uh, so thank you, Harry, and thank you, everybody else. Thank you, Andrea, who's uh, um, I've been had a very long day, um, but uh, I really appreciate that some of you, uh, some of you have, like Nelly, I know you've been on a long time and uh, um, it's just wonderful. It's it's been some it's been an absolutely amazing day today. Some amazing conversations and, and great presentations, and uh, uh, just can't thank you all enough for uh, for coming out and joining uh, our open house with us. Uh, so tomorrow morning we're we're starting bright and early at seven o'clock with um, a presentation for at seven o'clock for the School of Tourism and Hospitality Management. So uh, it'd be a great one to check out uh, uh, if you're interested in the study abroad option. Um, so that's it for me, and uh, thank you, everybody. Again, Raphael, if you don't mind just staying on the on the call, um, I really appreciate it, and hopefully see you all tomorrow morning. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, everyone.